Algebra 1, we are um, finishing our lesson on radicals with this Ed Puzzle video. So in class, we talked about multiplying radicals. Now we're going to talk about adding and subtracting radicals, which has a little bit of a different rule. All right, so with adding and subtracting radicals, I want you to think of combining like terms. So remember, we said that 3x and 5x are like terms. So I can actually combine them by adding the coefficients. So 3x plus 5x is going to give me 8x. If I had 3x plus 5y, I wouldn't be able to combine them because they're not like terms, right? They don't have the same variable. That sort of idea is the same thing that's happening with adding and subtracting radicals. But instead of terms with variables, we need the same radicand to be able to add and subtract. All right, so the very first thing we need to do is simplify. That was why it was important that we learned how to do our factor trees, right? So a brief review on simplifying. Say I have square root of 12. So factors for square root of 12 are 4 times 3. I'm going to cross out 12 because I broke it down. And I'm going to break down the 4 into 2 and 2. So it looks like I have a pair of 2s and a 3 left over. So square root of 12 is going to become 2 square root 3. Remember, my pair of numbers comes outside the radical, but just as one number from that set. So square root of 12 and 2 square root 3 are the same. You can check them in the calculator if you don't believe me. All right, so after we simplify, we're going to circle all the expressions with the same radicand. We call them right, like radicands, which is the same thing as like terms, right? You have to have the same number underneath the radical. And then you just add or subtract the coefficients of the ones that we circled. So looking here, all of these radicals are as broken down as they possibly can be. 3 is a prime number, and 2 is a prime number. So I don't need to simplify anything. I went ahead and circled the 2 square root 3 and the 4 square root 3 and the negative 3 square root 3 because they all have the same radicand, the same number underneath the radical, so I can say that they are like terms. I didn't circle 2 because 2 is different than 3. All right, so next up, what we're going to do is just combine those coefficients. Let me see if I have a different highlighter. So 2, 4, and negative 3. When I add all those numbers together, and I'm going to get out my calculator, Two plus four minus three. Remember there's a subtraction sign in front of that three. So when I do two plus four, I get six, and six minus three is three. So that's why we end up, after we combine these three, we end up with three square root three. Notice my radicand didn't change. It just acts like the variable in my like terms. It just stays with it, right? It stays with that coefficient. And then my, my term that didn't have any other like terms, I just bring it down. So this is as simple as it gets. Now we'll, let's go ahead and make sure that these two things are the same, right? This right here is the same thing as this right here. So we're going to check our work in the calculator. Remember, this is the Desmos app if you don't have it. I would download it. It's free. All right, so 2 square root 3 plus, oops, all right, so you see the mistake I'm doing. Do you see how my radical symbol keeps on going? So when I type, the radical extends with it. We can't do that. We need the radical to end with the 3. So I need to move, see that little arrow? That moves the cursor outside so I can do the plus button. The plus needs to be outside. All right, 4 square root 3. Again, move my little arrow. Minus 3 square root 3. Arrow plus square root 2. All right, so my answer is going to be approximately 6.61. 6.61. All right, let's do the same thing over here. Less numbers, so this will be easier. 3 square root 3, use my little arrow, plus square root 2. And I get the same thing. 6.61. So they are equal. We did it correctly. All right, let's go ahead and practice by circling the like radicands. 
All right, so we need to make sure that we've got things as simple as possible for all of these um, radicands. Can I simplify two any further? Nope. What about three? That's as far as it gets. All right, six, though. Let's look at this third one. Six seems like it could be simplified further. So let's make a factor tree for six. What can six be broken down into? Three and two. I can't break down either of these numbers anymore, and I don't have a pair. So I can't do anything. It looks like this is as simple as it gets, so I'm going to leave it like it is. I cannot break it down anymore. All right, and then two is broken down as far as possible. So looking at these, it looks like two square root two and three square root two are the only ones that have like radicands. So if I combine them, I would be adding the coefficients. So two square root two plus three square root two is going to equal five square root two. All I did is just add those two coefficients together. I took it a step further. We just needed a circle, but I just got carried away. All right, let's look here and make sure that we've broken everything down. All right, 5 is a prime number, so we can't break that down anymore. So it's 7, but 8, it looks like we could. All right, so 8, we would a factor would be 4 and 2. And then I know that 4 can be broken down into 2 and 2. So I've got one pair of 2s, and I've got a 2 left over. So it looks to me like 5 square root of 8 could be broken down into and I'm not even sure what I'm doing. There we go. So I brought my pair of twos on the outside, right? I bring one pair of twos and I leave the other two in. So five times two is ten square root two. Now I know you're asking where did the five come from again? Look up here. See how the 5 is already on the outside? So when I bring my pair of 2's on the outside, I need to multiply the 2 by the 5 that's already on the outside. So 5 times 2 is 10. 10 square root of 2. So let me go ahead and rewrite this as 10 square root 2. Alright, now we can identify whether or not we have any like radicands at this point. All right, so it looks like we have two like radicands. I want you to go ahead and so tell me um, or select on the multiple choice which you think are the two. All right, I hope you picked 8 square root 5 and 7 square root 5 because they both have the same number underneath the radical symbol. All right, so if I want to combine these two, all I need to do is add the coefficients. So 8 plus 7 is 15 and just bring that square root of 5 with it. 15 square root of 5. All right. Now this last one. Let's see if we can break any of them down anymore. 3 is a prime number. All right, square root of 4, that should ring some bells in your head because 4 is a perfect square, right? So we can actually rewrite this as the number 2. The square root of 4 is going to be 2. All right, 2 is a prime number and 3 is a prime number. All right, let's go ahead and circle any like radicands. 3 and 4 square root of 3. 2 doesn't even have a radical next to it, so it definitely can't have any like radicands because there's no radical symbol. And this is a 2. These are 3s. All right, so if I were to combine them, what would I get? I don't see any coefficient in front of the square root of 3. Remember in math when we don't have a coefficient, we can assume it's a 1. So 4 plus 1 is going to equal 5 square root 3. Alright. I'm on my last one. Last page of this packet. All right, so skills practice. All we're going to do is be um, practicing combining these radical terms. I'm going to do some with you. I'll let you do some, and then um, we'll pick up from there. All right, so first thing we need to do is simplify. I'm going to write my steps up at the top. Simplify. Number two, circle, 
like radicands. Number three, combine coefficients of like radicands. All right, so step number one is simplify. So seven and seven are prime numbers that can't be simplified anymore. I'm going to go ahead and circle the like radicands. They're both like radicands because they have seven underneath the radical. So all I need to do is add the coefficient. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in my calculator. Negative three plus four. It's going to give me one. So one square root of seven is my answer. Now remember, this looks funny because normally I don't write one. It's understood. So I can just write square root of seven as my final answer. If I wanted to check my work, I would put in the whole thing, negative three square root seven plus four square root seven, and I get 2.645. Let's just put in square root of seven, and you'll see it's the same thing, so we simplified it. All right, I want you to go ahead and try number two on your own. So pause the video, work it out, answer the question, and then come back. Okay, so the first thing we needed to do was simplify. Negative 2 square root 3 can't be simplified anymore, but 3 square root 27 can. All right, so if this can be simplified, let's go ahead and do this off to the side. 3 square root 27. All right. Some factors of 27 are 9 and 3. I'm going to cross out the 27 because we factored it. I know the 3 can be broken down even more. So I have a pair of 3's and one 3 left over. And then I have a 3 on the outside. It's raining 3's. 3's are all over the place. Alright, so I already have a 3 on the outside. I'm going to multiply that outside 3 by the pair of 3's that I took out. And I'm going to leave this last 3 on the inside. So this is going to end up being 3 times 3 is 9 square root 3. All right, so now let's rewrite the expression up here. Negative 2 square root 3 plus 9 square root 3. Remember, these two are the same thing. We just simplified it. So 3 square root 27 is the same thing as 9 square root 3. Now we do have like radicands, 3 and 3, so we can combine the coefficients. The coefficient of the first term, negative 2. The coefficient of the second term, 9. So negative 2 plus 9 is going to give me 7 square root 3. And that's my final answer. Again, if you want to check your work, put the original problem into Desmos and then put your answer into Desmos and you should get the same thing. All right, pause the video and work out this next one. 2 square root 6 plus 3 square root 54. So go ahead and pause the video. All right. So it looks like we can simplify, well, both of them can be broken down, right? So let's try and break down this first one, 2 square root 6. 6 can be broken down into 2 and 3. So 2 cannot be broken down any further, neither can 3. So I have to leave it at how it is. All right, so let's go ahead and try the other one, square root 54. All right. So think about some factors of 54. All right, so off the top of my head, I'm having trouble thinking of factors. What do I do? Just take the number and divide it by something that you think could be a factor. I see that 54 is an even number, so I'm pretty sure 2 is a factor. Okay? So 2 and 27. All right, let me scratch through that 54 because I went ahead and broke it down. Now with 27, I'm more confident in my factors, right? 9 and 3. And then I can break down the 9 even further into 3 and 3. So it looks like I have a pair of 3s. I have a 3 left over and a 2 left over. So on the outside, I already have a 3. Good afternoon. 
All right, so I have a three originally on the outside, and then I'm bringing this pair of threes out as well. So the first three came from the outside, and the second three came from this pair that I circled. Now what do I have on the inside? I have a three left over and a two left over. Remember when I have numbers left over on the inside of the outside, I'm multiplying them. So three times three is nine, three times two is six. Nine square root of six is going to be my simplified version. What a coincidence. It is now like terms with my first radicand. So see how they both have six in the um, underneath the radical symbol? So all I need to do is add my coefficients. Two plus nine is going to give me 11 square root six. 11 square root six. All right, let's go ahead and do one last one together. All right, so looking at this, I have three separate radicands that are all not like radicands at the moment, but maybe they could be broken down. Let's start off with the 18. So I can think of 9 times 2 gives me 18. All right, so I can break 9 down into 3 and 3. So I'm going to circle that and box the 2. All right, what do I already have on the outside? I have a negative 3. What am I bringing out? A 3. What am I leaving in? Two. So it looks like negative three square root 18 is going to become negative nine square root two. That's because negative three times three is negative nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that underneath it, negative nine square root two. All right, let's look at the next term. I know that 8 can be broken down into 4 and 2. And I know that 4 can be broken down into 2 and 2. So I've got a pair of 2's and I've got 1, 2 left over. Alright, so it looks like I am done with simplification. If I look back at the original term, I had a 3 on the outside. And what am I bringing out? I'm bringing out a 2 because I had a pair of 2's. And then I'm leaving in this box too. So now 3 times 2 is 6, and I have the square root of 2 left over. So I simplified this radical to be 6 square root 2. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right here, plus 6 square root 2. All right, let's look at the last one. This negative 24, square root of 24. All right, off the top of my head, I can think 6 and 4 is 24. Scratch out the 24. All right, 6 can be broken down into 3 and 2. 4 can be broken down into 2 and 2. So it looks like I have a pair of 2s. I have 1, 2 left over and 1, 3 left over. So let's go ahead and simplify. All right, what's in front? What's the coefficient in front? All right, I know you're thinking that it's nothing because you don't see a number, but it's actually a negative one. Remember, ones are to be understood to be there, and it's a subtraction sign, so it's a negative one. Now I'm going to bring out this pair of twos to the outside, so negative one times two, and I'm going to leave the single three and the single two on the inside. So negative 1 times 2 gives me a negative 2, and 3 times 2 gives me 6. So this is my simplified version. Negative 2 square root 6. Negative 2 square root 6. All right, let's go ahead and circle the like radicands. So I see this one and this one. This does not have a like radicand because 6 does not equal 2. All right, so let's go ahead and add the coefficients. Negative 9 plus 6. Negative 9 plus 6 is going to give me a negative 3. Remember to bring that square root 2. And then this term that didn't have a like radicand, just drop it down. Negative 2 square root 6. That's as simple as it gets. That's my final answer. 
All right, I know this video is longer than most, so I'm going to cut it off there. Um, we're going to finish the rest of these problems during our quiz review at a later date. Um, if you want to go ahead and try them, by all means try them, and you can send me pictures on my mind, and I can check your work. All right, sounds good. See you next class.